Welcome back, everybody, to Millennium Dawn, a Hearts of Iron 4 mod. We are the nation of Poland, which is currently being puppeted by the United States. But the good news is that we are in the midst of a NATO war against the Russians and the Chinese that is going very, very well. Uh, and so we're getting some of our territory back, and hopefully we will eventually be able to climb out from under the oppressive clutches of the American regime. Uh, if you didn't see the first four episodes that led to this point, uh, there's a link in the description below that will take you back to episode one. But let's go ahead and dive in. It is September of 2025. You can see the massive amount of divisions that are involved in the action all along the lines. And I would imagine that Russia does not have much time left uh, before they're out of this war. Let's see how China's doing. China's faring far better. Uh, Things have not really touched them all that much, except for this little invasion that's happening over here. This all started because China invaded Taiwan, otherwise known as the Republic of China, which they took successfully. But that led to a war uh, with NATO, with the United States, most of the major world powers other than China and Russia. And that's kind of where things stand right now. So we have a ton of air experience, 573 points to be exact. So right now we're working on the uh, the best available plane we have is the fourth gen uh, multi-role fighter. So we've got a lot of points that we could spend on uh, making it better. And so I'm going to just improve everything, including the reliability. We're going to get reliability up about as high as we can get it. Range and engines both uh, are the only things that we can improve other than reliability. So we're going to spend most of those points. So now we have the 4th Gen Multi-Role Fighter Mark One. So we'll go ahead and start producing some of those. My problem right now is there's just nobody that has available light metals and technology metals that I can trade with. So I'm, I'm best in this case to uh, see if I can just switch over and uh, change my trade policy. So I'm trying to remember, I'm so used to playing the, the regular version of this that, here we go, globalized trade economy. Uh, let's switch down to a mixed economy where we're only trading half of our resources to market. That'll get us some more of our own stuff. And it didn't really help a whole lot. Oh, there, it's starting to. So it seems like there's kind of been a stop in the fighting. Uh, we advanced so close to Moscow, and then all of a sudden, all of these divisions, even though they massively outnumber the Soviet or the Russians, uh, they haven't been able to push. So I'm going to move my 35 divisions that I currently have in the field down here, see if maybe I can help make a push up into this region. Maybe it'll be a little easier to attack. I'm not really sure what the holdup is that suddenly caused everything to, to bog down and stop. Let's see what's happening in the east. Really nothing has changed there either. It's, it's all just kind of ground to a halt at the moment. Here's the situation. 1.14 million losses on our side. 2.34 million on the uh, side of Russia and China. And you can see the fielded manpower significantly greater on our side. So here's the situation. We're all attacking along the line, and pretty much everywhere that it's being attacked, we're losing. I don't know why that happened, because we were doing so well. We were pushing so far into Russia, and then it just seemed like when they got squeezed to the last moment, it just all came to a stop. I'm currently attacking from Polish-controlled territory here, just because I have the best infrastructure and I can get supplies to flow. We're trying to make a, a push toward Moscow. It's just not happening. Situation really hasn't changed all that much over here in the east on that second front that we've opened up. I've had a ton of countries sending me weapons and supplies. Uh, so, you know, the, the makeup of my armed forces right now must be quite strange. Because of the, uh, you can see here just how many different types of weapons we have that we're using. Well, it looks like France wants to send us 10 divisions and expeditionary forces to help out. Not sure why. They're in the same war we are. They could just send those divisions themselves. 
so a little something happened down here. Somehow Russia had a bunch of territory. So uh, between myself and Belgium, we've now gobbled up all of that territory that suddenly became Russian. Uh, you can see now we're starting to make some progress. Still not a lot of progress over on this side, but down here, uh, coming up out of Kazakhstan, there's definitely some progress being made. Uh, we haven't quite inched any closer toward Moscow, but I think we're going to get there. We got a new division. Is that the only one? No, we got a few. Oh, these are the the French divisions. So let's uh, add all of those to this army here. All right, we're finally seeing some progress here. We may actually break through and take Kaluga. Up to 95%, saying another five days. There's only, well, there was one division, now there's two again. Oh, we got the fifth generation multi role fighter available to us now. What's going on here? We had a. Uh, it was just a cargo ship was sunk. I think we're going to finally start breaking through toward Moscow. Fifth generation multi role fighters now. We could get all the way up to second generation stealth technology. Alright. Uh, so much for taking Kaluga. Let's back up and see what's going on here. Alright. A lot of movement happening from Kazakhstan, so that's good. Uh, still not a lot of change here, though. It looks like some divisions getting encircled, so that could be a big deal, because there's a, there's a whole lot going on in here. All right, there's definitely some progress being made on the Eastern Front now. And you can see that there are a couple of Chinese divisions that have gotten themselves trapped behind the lines, and hopefully we'll deal with those over there. Meanwhile, the situation over here in the West is still kind of a mixed bag, but as we continue to deal with trouble closing the gap to dealing with Moscow, uh, continued success happening further to the east out of Kazakhstan. Uh, we're definitely pushing the front further and further forward. Eventually, hopefully we'll make a connection here. We'll cut off all of these guys, and then maybe something can happen. Looks like some French and German troops and some Spanish moved up into here. If we could get them to attack down this way, we might actually deal with these two divisions of motorized marine infantry. 39 divisions attacking two, and it's taking forever to finish them off. Okay, well, we didn't take that other territory, or take this territory yet, but we do have them cut off, and now it's just a one division. And it looks, it looks like now that we've made that breakthrough, the whole thing might collapse, and we might be able to make a drive on Moscow as soon as we can finish off this division here. He's got no way to reinforce that division, so it's got to be just a matter of time. 24 divisions against one. Come on. There we go. I think we got him. Oh, we're pushing forward there, too. We're only two territories away from Moscow now. Let's drive on Moscow. It's July 2026. I think now that we made the breakthrough and we got across the river, the river was the sticking point. It was really tough attacking across that river. Now that we got across the river, I think we'll be able to take the capital. We have some research to do here in the meantime. Philippines not going to help us with military aid anymore. What the heck? Just one division holding doorstep to Moscow. Of course, we have another river to attack across. Let's back up a little more. Look at the overall situation. 
Yeah, still about the same there. What's Germany offering? Oh, nice. Some tanks. There we go. We're on the doorstep to Moscow. There's one division standing against our Polish and French forces that are going in together. And it looks like in about a week, week and a half, we should have it. There we go. Let's see what's happening elsewhere. It looks like not a lot of success other places. Just the, uh, the success we're having in our little spearhead thrust here. It's just one tank battalion that's defending against us right now. And it looks like it might be about to lose. Two days. We're going to take Moscow. Polish force is marching into Moscow, baby. Oh, come on. Right before we defeated them, a second division showed up. And now a third coming in. Oh, they're going to hold us off right at the door. Okay. All right, we've upgraded from Small Arms 2015 to Small Arms 2025. I don't think that's something we can make a variant of. It's not. But that's new weaponry for our infantry, which we don't have a lot of. We have mostly armored units in the field right now. But uh, since we, we're having some supply issues right now, there's no sense in attacking Moscow. So we're actually attacking over this way. And it looks like we actually were successful. Well, we keep being successful, and then we have to push further. So those are some French troops, but our Polish troops are also moving in there. I'm going to see then, once we move into that region, if we can try maybe to push around toward Moscow. We'll see what happens once we get there. Now, now it looks like we're trying to pull out. So we'll hit over here, and then maybe we'll have more success if we're attacking from two different directions at the same time. Just kind of backing out to get a bird's eye view of what's happening. And you can see there's not a lot of fighting happening at the moment. Supply issues are just really killing us right now. All right, we've pushed up. We've uh, taken this area here that kind of solidifies the front line a little more. Hopefully with every bit of territory that we take, the supply issues get a little bit better. Uh, there's just major, major issues with supply, and you can see if I look at my troops, you can see how their organization just drops rapidly. Even when I'm not attacking, the organization drops, and it's all because of supply status. You can see that none of them are getting more than about 75% supplies at the moment. There's just too many divisions trying to attack. So now we're trying to reach, uh, some of the troops have pushed as far south as right here. So we're trying to break through right here, and that would effectively cut off all the divisions to the west of here. If we could manage to do that, we'd have all of these divisions here cut off. And that might allow us to destroy them and maybe make a breakthrough. But again, the issue is we, we just have too many divisions that are attacking. Looks like another attack happening on Moscow. Still just one division defending there, but... China seizes the reins of power over the SCO from Russia. So that's their faction. It looks like Russia is now weakened to the point where they no longer lead the faction. Let's take a look at the, the war situation. You can see here how much territory. Russia is two-thirds toward capitulation. China is actually 4%, so for the first time they've lost some toward capitulation. Uh, we outnumber them something like 3 to 1. And you can see here, yeah, it looks like the Americans are starting to have some real success uh, pushing forward into China. They might even start pushing into North Korea pretty soon. Well, there it is. Without any fanfare whatsoever, Moscow just fell to uh, the coalition forces. I'd really still like to see us push through here. I'm actually going to try to send uh, this particular army here, which includes French forces, uh, actually, you know what? I think I'll keep that one here just because it includes French forces. And I'm going to send my 30 divisions in this other army. It's all armored cavalry. 
I'm going to see if I can send them over to help the U.S. and the East. I don't know how we'd get them there or how that will work, but I'd very much like to try. Uh, if we could get over here, there might not be the supply issues, and we might see a lot more success in terms of ground action. So we'll see if we can get our forces over there. All right, we're going to try now with these other 20, uh, 21 divisions to push through again. It looks like we're going to do it this time. All right, we've connected the dots. So now, and you can see everybody else is shifting because of that. Now what we've got are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 Russian, uh, 15, 16. 16 Russian divisions that are cut off. And you can see that because of that, everything has now shifted. So we're going to continue that push. And the, the 30 divisions that I have here, I couldn't get them over to where the U.S. is attacking. So instead what I'm doing is I'm sending them over here to this border. And we're going to see if we can push through and make our way over to China this way. And maybe try to link up. Of course, that's going to create some real supply issues. But we're going to give it a go anyway. Let's see if we can take Omsk. Well, maybe not. But again, at least we're opening up yet another front for the Russians to have to deal with. Meanwhile, this is all collapsing. You can see that now that they've been cut off from their supply, they're very quickly going to fall. And let's see what that does. You can see the casualties. 3 million for them, 2 million for us. It's going to climb rapidly when those divisions start getting destroyed. Right now, it's just about a million man difference. With the world growing more and more tense, the Japanese government has today declared that it would be ready to defend Japanese interests and its ideological persistence both at home and, more importantly, abroad. This is a major uproar in Japanese foreign policy. So after World War II, Japan was basically reduced to the point where they, they have a defense force, but they don't have kind of an offensive capable army. Uh, so I guess that's what we're saying here is that they're abandoning the idea that they're only going to have a civil, like a, a small defense force and they're going to get a little more involved in what's going on in the world. So interesting. Uh, not a lot of success happening right now over here with our armies, and that's fine because uh, great success happening on this side. We just got one small pocket left with, and you see it just collapsed. So um, now we're going to go after this one division here. Let's look at the casualties now. Now you can see it's 3.22 million, so it's gone up quite a bit uh, as we've been destroying these Russian divisions. And they're now at 70% toward capitulation, but there's a lot of Russian territory still to take. So this is interesting. Syria, which had declared war on Hezbollah, has lost that war to Hezbollah and been puppeted by Hezbollah. So that's kind of interesting. Looks like there's your new leader in Syria. So we finally destroyed the last pocket of resistance among the Russians. Uh, so now it's going to take some time for all of these units, including what appear to be a bunch of Turkish units, which I guess Turkey is in NATO, um, are going to need some time to get kind of resupplied and ready to move again. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe we can do the same thing and create another cutoff right here to be able to destroy some more Russian divisions. All right, major offensive started all the way along the lines. I had nothing to do with it. I just saw it happen. It was interesting how just instantly everything started attacking. Most of the places where we're attacking, there's not a lot of success, but every single time we win somewhere, we push a little further into Russian territory and we get a little further toward their collapse. So let's see if we can get all of our divisions over in here and we can help push for another encirclement that will allow us to destroy a bunch more Russian divisions. All right, looks like we've seen a major collapse of the Russian forces in the east. You can see a lot happening now. We're about to close in on all kinds of territory there. Let's see where that puts us. Oh yeah, Russia's actually getting really close now. That's 78%. We just need maybe to take a couple more of these major cities 
in through here and Russia will collapse and then we have to go after China. So this war is far, far from over, but it's going to get a lot easier if the Russians are taken out of it. We'll see how that territory gets divided up or what happens with it when the time comes. I believe we are seeing the end of Russia, at least as we know it, as the collapse just absolutely continues. Uh, you can see that, at least for control purposes, most of the land is going to Norway, myself, and Belgium. It's not going to stay that way. Uh, once they collapse, we'll see how this all happens. It may not do much until the war is actually over, but they're 93% toward capitulation. It's going to get real interesting when that finishes. And it looks like the U.S. is continuing to have some success. They're knocking on the door to the northern part of North Korea. But pretty much success all the way along the lines there. And once the Russian divisions are out, it's just going to be the Chinese defending. Let's see where they're at now. 93% still. We'll probably wrap this episode up once Russia's out of the war. Looks like Perm's about to fall. That'll be another victory point for us. We'll see if that has any impact on the war itself. I put them to 94%, so a little bit yet. Well then, Germany's going to send me 18 divisions as an expeditionary force. So in addition to the 10 French divisions, I'll now have 18 German divisions in my force. We'll just make them as a separate army. German army under the command of the Polish, just like we all knew it would be, right? That should be all the assigned divisions. So here's the map now, as we see it. Still a lot of Russian territory left, and their, their capital now is all the way over here. Not entirely sure that we could get there. Doesn't look like it'll even let us try. Well, we can try. I don't think we'll be successful. Looks like at least for the moment the offensive has stopped. Not entirely sure why when we're so close to capitulation. Well, it looks like once again we've got a huge pocket we've created. And so some of the remaining Russian divisions are caught in there. I've got to imagine that we're within a month or two of seeing the end of this war. But I guess we'll find out once it all comes crashing down. In the east, as we're now into June of 2027, that area controlled by Taiwan and the United States continues to grow. And it's almost all American units, though. There are some French divisions. I see at least one Canadian division, but it's otherwise all American divisions, at least in China. We sent all of our divisions to help with collapsing this pocket over here. I think that'll destroy pretty much what's left of the Russian army. You can see how short the front line is now. Remember how long it was around this whole pocket. China has assumed faction leadership of the European Pact. All right. Let's take a look at our factions here. So there's NATO, which you can see. The Czech Republic, Austria, Italy, Bosnia, Serbia, Greece are not part of. Belarus is not part of. Sweden and Finland are not part of. The Commonwealth has the UK, Canada, not much else. The European Pact actually has Somalia, it looks like. Uh, who's this in NATO? Is that Nigeria? Niger. Um, the Commonwealth has, of course, Australia. European Pact, which is a strange name, is basically just China, Somalia, and Russia at this point. Let's see what happens with the collapse of this pocket. Let's see if that is a, uh, enough. Although I don't see any victory points in there. So all that's really going to do is destroy some Chinese and Russian divisions. We're going to probably have to take some of these territories here to finally win. So Russia's got somewhere between 54 and 64 divisions left. They're at 96% toward capitulation. China, of course, only 5%, and the war is 50% overall. Let's gather up all of our divisions. I think that that can be handled. 
Hong Kong has capitulated. That's interesting. I hadn't even been paying attention to that. Hong Kong is right over here, isn't it? I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I know it's a little peninsula down in this area somewhere. Well, look at that. Finland declared war on Russia and joined NATO. I guess they saw that the writing was on the wall and figured it was a really nice time to join in the fun. Not entirely sure why they would wait until now to join, but I guess we'll take it. And Germany has called Finland into the conflict. Which I cannot believe is not over yet against the Russians. It looks like it's all Chinese forces on the border now. That's kind of interesting. But i got to believe we're almost there. Just maybe take a couple more of these objectives. We're at 99% finally with the Russians, who are down to just 10 divisions now. I want to look at the casualty situation. The United States has lost 1.74 million, including a 1.1 million against the Chinese, another half a million against the Russians. Think about this. The United States hasn't lost 1.74 million in all of our wars combined and killed. Uh, between the American Civil War and the uh, Second World War, we had about a million deaths, and that's the vast majority. I mean, that's probably 80-85% of our total war deaths of all time are in those two conflicts. That's a massive amount. The French have lost 844,000. The Russians have lost almost 2 million. Chinese have lost 2 million. But those two countries have had those kinds of losses before uh, in things like World War II. Not to make light of millions of deaths, but 1.74 million to Americans would be much more significant than what it would be to the Russians or the Chinese. It looks like we lost... I thought we had that territory conquered already, their capital. Where's the capital? now? the capital's back here. Yeah, it's back to 98%. So probably pushing to the capital would be enough to get this done. There's two Chinese divisions encircled right there. It's November of 2027. This war has dragged on forever, and it's far from over. High-level summit held between Turkey and Bahrain. I don't know what other research we really need to do here on planes. I guess maybe we could work on some bombers. We really don't have any good bombers. Keep pushing forward, guys. Yeah, it's pretty much just the uh, the Chinese defending up here on the northern end of things. But the, the real progress is being made here in the south by Polish and Belgian divisions, it looks like. Is that Belgium? I think that's Belgium. Yep. All right. Russia has capitulated, giving us 50% of their stockpiled equipment. Dang, that's a lot of equipment, too. So there we have it, and you can see how things got divided up. It looks like Norway got to keep a lot of the territory, at least for now. We've got a nice swath of territory. Belgium has most of Russia. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how that worked out. Uh, and then, of course, the United States. But we're going to wrap up right there. The next episode, then, will be the war against China. Uh, who is really all that's left. And you can see it's going 52% in our favor, but a long way to go. But now, all of these divisions that we're taking on Russia can pour into China, and China's going to have a real problem on its hands. But let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Hit that like button if you would, and we will see you again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.